Hi there, I'm Vinny Caggiano, eclectic guitarist, and today I want to talk about the most radical concept uh, that I propose, which is that there is no such thing as a major or minor key, okay? Now that sounds like absolutely radical and doesn't seem to make sense when first mentioned, but um, as I go on to clarify this, I think you'll agree with what I'm saying, okay? Now in order to really get a whole big picture of what's going on with this whole theory of mine is you have to go back to Pythagoras and it's very very important to understand that the musical system that we have today do re mi fa so la ti do is based on or codified by uh, Pythagoras's findings okay he basically codified the western musical system as we have it today and how he did this was through a monochord much like a guitar string except without any neck just a, a chord between two blocks of wood and uh, what he discovered is that one note actually contains a whole series of notes within it let's see if I can make this easier to hear I don't know if you hear those high ringing notes if you were in this room you would those are called harmonics uh, from those embedded harmonics that he got from one string tuned to one note, he was able to get the entire system of notes out of that. So from that, we can basically start on a premise that uh, nature contains the musical scale within it. And I'm inclined to believe that the musical scale that we have today is actually embedded in every physical object in the universe. And this is why we have the seven chakra system, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Uh, so uh, that's that's my belief, and uh, I'm willing to stick to it. Now, uh, let's move a little bit further. Now, um, back in those days, when you think about music, right? You have do re mi fa so la ti do. Who said that do was going to be the first note? Think about it. You had an array like just the sound of these seven tones. Who decided that? The very first tone, Do, is going to be Do, and that's going to be the first note of the scale. Well, actually, Pythagoras didn't think that way. He believed that all seven notes of the scale can be a starting point. These are what we know today as the Greek modes. For those of you that don't understand music theory, it's actually pretty simple. We have, if you think of, you were taught in school, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, Ti, La, Sol, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. Now, this is more than just Do, a deer, a female deer. Uh, kind of child song. This is a system called solfeggio, which is actually a very advanced system of vocalizing music, and it's a very intense training. I, I went through it in college. It ain't easy. So it is actually a very advanced uh, practice in music. In any case, um, we have this do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, ti, la, sol, fa, mi, re, do. Now, um, Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to play the same scale, except I'm going to start on Re instead of starting on Do. So it's like a treadmill that goes around, and I'm going to sing Re, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, Re. Now notice that doesn't sound like Do a deer anymore. Now what I did was I started on the second note of the scale. You could start on the third note of the scale, the fourth note of the scale, the fifth note, and so on. So you get seven different cycles around. Do to do, re to re, mi to mi, fa to fa, etc. Right? So these are what's known as the seven modes, and they have fancy dancy Greek names the Ionian mode, the Dorian mode, the Phrygian mode, the Lydian mode, the Mixo Lydian mode, the Aeolian mode, and the Locrian mode. Okay? Now, here's, here's the deal. Okay? Um, why do we have a major minor key system? Well, that actually wasn't codified by the Greeks whatsoever, that was actually done by the Catholic Church. Now, I'm going to propose some hypothetical history here. It doesn't mean the history, obviously, is not necessarily true, although it might be. All right. The point is the end result of the reasoning. The fact is that the state of affairs that I'm going to describe exists today, so it has to have happened for some reason. Okay. Um, all right, going back to the Greeks, if you sing from do to do, or re to re, or me to me, or fa to fa, the Greeks had this whole integrated system of belief where they believed that astrology, astronomy, uh, the arts, uh, mathematics, all the sciences and arts and basically every phenomenon you can study as a field of knowledge were all interrelated. And in fact, um, the seven visible planets 
were connected with the seven modes, and there were seven hills in Greece that were named uh, by these seven different uh, modes. I don't know if the hills came first or the modes came first, it doesn't matter. But this is an, an example of how they integrated everything into one system. All right, now, what the Greeks believed was that when you create a mode, it actually evokes a psychological state. All right? For example, the Phrygian mode was supposed to evoke an erotic state, not a neurotic state, an erotic state, which uh, you might find questionable just on hearing, but this is what they believe. So here is the Phrygian mode, and don't get all too turned on about this. It's a little bit reminiscent of kind of Arabian, you know, uh, belly dancing music or whatever. Uh, they also believe that the Dorian mode was martial, like a warrior mode, and the Mixolydian mode was a partying mode. So we have seven of these modes that are supposed to evoke psychological states. Now, along comes the church and its depressing, self-flagellating philosophy of be depressed and get to heaven. Okay, now what happened was that this is the hypothetical history part. Somehow this did happen, but I don't know how, so I'm making this part up. Uh, since the seven modes are supposed to evoke psychological states and the church did not like the idea of a mode invoking saying a partying feeling or an erotic feeling uh, uh, or even a martial feeling they decided to keep two of the modes which is your basic do to do And the sixth step of the scale, which is the Aeolian mode, which sounds like this. Which I would contend is probably the saddest of all modes uh, in terms of its mood. And by the way, notice the confluence of the sounds of mode, mood. Okay, in any case, the church threw out five of the modes, all right? And then they said there are two keys, two types of key, major and minor. The major one is, and the minor one is, okay? So, the point I want to get to here is that since five of these modes were chucked out, all right, uh, they created an artificial system called the key system. Now, I'm not saying there's no such thing as key. What I'm saying is that there's no such thing as key being determined as major or minor. And what I mean is this. Now, all you musicians out there know that the uh, diatonic scale is created by the whole step, half step formula, which means to say that we have 12 notes in our entire system. And you have to go from one step to a whole step away, to a whole step away, to a half step, to a whole, 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 and half. And that creates do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, those seven notes out of the 12 that exist. Now, you could start on any one of those 12 steps to create Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. These are called the keys, okay? And so on and so forth. Okay, there are 12 different keys. We could create Do, Re, Mi on any one of those 12, all right? But the deal is here. This is what I say. First of all, number one rule. There is a difference between root and key. All right? Musicians think about this. There is a difference between root and key. Now, why do I say this? Well, if I walked into a jam session and the musicians were jamming out on an A minor to a C to a D chord, I'd ask them, what key are you in? And they'd say the key of A minor. All right? Now, this is actually wrong. And the reason why I say this is because even though A minor is the starting ending and ending chord of this, so it's definitely the gravitational, the gravity pulls to this chord. It wants to end there. So it has the gravity. All right, the deal here is that um, these three chords actually emanate, come from, arise from the key of G major. Every key has a set of chords that are built from it. In the key of G, we have the chords G, A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor, and F sharp diminished, which I exclude because it's not a stable chord. All right, so we have six basic chords in every key that are stable, all right, that are usable for a song. And uh, on a side note, that diminished chord, I can explain why I parenthesize it and um, 
it's a it's a fun little juicy bit of information for musicians uh, to understand but it's a little too detailed and technical all right so in any case uh, I used three chords from the key of G and musicians would say that's the key of a minor but how could that be if it came from the key of G what they're trying to tell you is that the root of the key is the root of the chord progression is a minor now a minor is the second step of the key of G it's built on the second step of the key of G therefore it's known as the Dorian mode so really the true answer to that question would not be about key it would be about root the root is on the second step of the G scale and therefore it's a Dorian so if I walked into a room and they were playing this progression the precise answer they could should give me is that we're an a Dorian okay uh, those chords came from the key of G all right now, um, after around the time of the Industrial Revolution, classical music began to experiment when they heard American jazz and what was going on with that, yada yada. So, um, basically, after a while, um, all bets were off. Basically, they, they did whatever they wanted to do. And so the modes were actually resurrected after all these years, and they were being used again. But the problem here was that the major minor key system was already established. So musicians confuse the concept between root and key. Here's my definition of key. key. A key is a collection of notes or a family of notes that are related through the whole step, half step formula, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Now I'm going through all the modes here, all right, in the key of G. All right, so a key is a series of notes that are connected together through the whole step half step formula however the root and here's what I add to that that rule a key again a key is um, a series of notes that are related together through the whole step half step formula now italicize this in your mind whose root has not yet been determined okay so there's no such thing as a major or minor key there are major minor modes all that the key tells you is what those seven notes are that comprise it, okay? So, uh, for example, if I play the chord progression G, F, C, G, which is standard rock progression. All right, if I walked into a room and the musicians were jamming that and I said, what key are you in? They'd say G. Actually, those chords come from the key of C. This is a G mixolydian progression, that's the name of the mode, G mixolydian progression that came from the key of C. So the problem here is that even academics make this mistake. If I were to walk up to an academic and say, what is the root of the key of G? They would knee-jerk react and say, G, this is a mistake, all right? There are seven notes in the key of G that can be a root, okay? So this is the idea that I'm trying to convey here. There is a real misnomer. In, uh, in musical language going on as, as regards key okay key is neutral it doesn't have a root it's not been established what the root is okay key is neutral root is what establishes root okay um, and root is an interesting thing because root if I sit here and I just played a D minor chord while I was talking your brain would eventually establish that as a root chord in your mind so now I could play a whole progression around that D minor chord and you would feel like D minor is the home chord there's my D minor it wanted to end there okay so I hope this makes some kind of sense here I, I probably I'm probably missing a few salient points to get across this, but this is the first time I made a video like this alone without a questioner or an interviewer asking me about it. So I hope you enjoyed this little bit of radical information. And uh, oh, by the way, I, I have a I have a proposal uh, for musicians in academia. Basically, part of the problem is you talk about the key of G. All right, G A B C D E F sharp G are the notes. Who says that G should be the first note? All right, who says that? It's a circle. Who says the beginning of the circle is here, there, there, or there? If you didn't see the person who drew the circle, you don't know where it started. Okay, so um, basically my proposal is that instead of calling the key of G the key of G, we call it the one sharp key. It's got one sharp in it, and no other key has one sharp in it. Only the key of G does. What this does is it takes away the bias of the idea that G is the root of the key. 
And so, that's my lecture for today. Have fun, enjoy yourself, and enjoy music. Peace.